welcome back to the SEMA Closure Repair Refinish stage for yes, ICAR. Yes, come on, come on. ICAR Inclusion Hubs Cool Tools presentation. You were here last year, you can see we've expanded the offerings of tools. We have scoured the floor, picked some of our best tools that are here at the show for you guys. Jason, where do you want to start? Well, why don't we start on this thing? We'll work our way down. Why don't you uh, All take right. off right over here? So we're going to start with the DJS Fabrications wheel dollies. How many people have seen them here at the show? How many of you have wheel dollies in your shop now? Awesome. So there's a lot of things changing with the manufacturers, especially when we got the hybrid cars. I just can't push a car around the shop anymore like I used to, right? A lot of times now with what's changed with some of the electronics in the car, I can't cycle keys with things disconnected from the car like I used to without throwing a lot of codes. So we're pushing cars around on dollies more than we ever have before. And my favorite set, we started using these in overhauling. So Chip had the first set of them when they came out years and years ago. But they are my favorite wheel dollies. The wheels are soft. They're easy to move around the shop. They go well over grates. If you have wash grates in your shop, especially if you're California and you're recycling the waters and some things, they still move very well from body to paint. I can push a car anywhere. And if you'll notice on these, they also have some pinch clamp uh, modifications so I can set them on the clamps, especially if I've got front end collision damage or I'm taking wheels and tires off. They also have approved um, caliber mounts for like Mercedes Benz and lots of different options. So any way that you need to anchor the car to move the car around, DJS has a solution for you. So I can't live without mine. They're definitely one of the coolest tools in my shop and I recommend them to everybody. When they come and watch me, they're like, I gotta get a set of those. So that's one of my first cool tool. That's a cool tool. That's an awesome tool. Now that's check out lazy. this cool tool here. This is the Chief Vulcan ADU. Looks like a big light, but uh, what we've got it's like here. It's a stapler. No, it's a big stapler. <laughs> we're, we're starting stapling cars back together, right? <laughs> rivets and blue. Cool tool. Cool tool. So the neat thing about the Vulcan is when we're removing adhesives from some of these vehicles that are rivet, rivet bonded or adhesively bonded, we want to break that bond. We want to use heat to help adjust that bond. This is an induction heater type of unit. But what's different about this one is you can actually set the max temperature. So if you don't want it to go above 400 degrees to cause any damage to a panel, whether it's you know, a steel panel, or if the vehicle manufacturer has a recommendation for a heating limit, you can set the temperature on this unit and it won't exceed that temperature. And you can go, go about your repairs and move that adhesive more easily. Uh, so that's a pretty cool tool as well. And that's a great tool, Jason, because right now when I talk to technicians, we get a lot, we get really caught up in the panel that we're either working on or replacing and we forget about what that panel's attached to or what may be behind it. So when you're thinking of heat and what the heat you're putting in the panel, it's not just about the panel. You gotta think about what's behind that, the Absolutely. wheelhouse, some of the other things. So that's great, I love the temp setting. That's a pretty cool tool. You got one more. I got a cool tool. Even here, though he's here. not a painter. Not a painter. I've painted before. <laughs> so this is another cool tool. This is the Neutralizer AC. So how many people have had troubles, you know, maybe uh, matching metallic colors and uh, bumper covers versus quarter panels and fenders. That happens from time to time. Metallic orientation gets a little bit messed up. You get some dirt in some of those plastic panels as well. The static electricity in those bumper covers attract dirt. So this tool can be used to get rid of that static electricity. Will help keep your paint jobs cleaner on the bumper covers. There's a couple of different organizations that make a tool like this. Pretty cool tool. And it will also help with that metallic orientation so you can get better color matches uh, when you're putting, you know, spraying bumper bumper covers next to a you know, you know to a quarter panel of fender, um, even when you you know doing it together, not even you know blending issues, just a, a color mismatch because of that metallic orientation. Uh, so this is a pretty cool tool that can help you improve uh, your color matches and keep your refinished jobs on your bumper covers and faces and other plastic parts uh, dust free. It is an amazing tool. I keep making the the metallic finer and orientation becomes more of an issue in our match than what we're mixing in the uh, what we're mixing out there. So where are my painters? Right. How many of you hate the body tech sending over a dead car? Right? It's like they intentionally kill the battery on everything before you get it over in the paint shop. <laughs> so one of my most poorly used tools in the paint department is in my guns. It seems to be my, jump, my jumper box, my battery charger. So I got a great one from Whistler. Great little company in Arkansas. As an Arkansas girl, I'm gonna pump an Arkansas company anytime I can. But this little small battery charger for 50 bucks will jump start any car that you've got in the shop. Um, but the other really cool thing that I like about it is I can go to the OBD port with it. So let's say body techs, if you want to save a battery, do you want to save a battery body techs? Save a life, save a battery, thank you. I can put this in when I know I've got to disconnect the battery, I'm going to be welding 
on today's cars, how many presets do they seem to have? Radio station, seat position, cell phone memory, all these things that the car has. I can put this to the OBD port. I can plug it in. I can do a setting save. It will save all my presets. I can disconnect the battery. I can repair the car. And when I reconnect the battery, all my presets go back on the car. And for 50 bucks, I can have a few of these floating around the body shop because I'm going to have more than one car at a time in there that I'm going to be disconnected on. Whistler's got a second tool for me. You see it popping out here. It's called the Flex LED light. So they range from $20 to $30, depending on the sizes, different sizes, magnetic, slap them anywhere on the car, under carriage to your frame machine, your bench, bend it anywhere you want it. LED light, different levels of brightness. I can put them in my pocket. I can carry them around with me, but I love the magnetic feature of them and they're just easy peasy. A kid's Christmas present picked out now. Stock and stuffer for you, Jason. That's right. All That's right. right. SADA always has a couple of great things for me at the SEMA show. This year there are about five new products in the booth from a color light um, to we do have the new, uh, the blowers are out again. But I got two guns this year. Um, there's the limited edition 5000, so every year at, at, uh, at SEMA we roll out a limited edition. This year the theme is the aviator. So I guess it took SADA about 100 years to realize that they've been calling themselves SADA Jet and that was kind of also <laughs> a plane. And the 5000 comes in the RP, also comes in the HVLP edition. But we rolled out something really crazy cool this year. It's the 1500 solve gun. So it's a great gun, price point $595 to get into a SADA gun. Comes in the RP and the HVLP, and it is designed for your low VOC base coat solvent. So national rule, low VOC solvent. Got a great wide uh, spray pattern. And so when I say that, it's not just the, the height of my fan size, but it's the width of my fan size. So if you're spraying a, a low VOC national compliant solvent, you know that wetting out that panel is real important. And this gun's been designed for that. Two, no, two nozzle sizes for it, great price point, really cool blue and black. That's so cool. I'm very excited, very cool tool for me it in my paint shop. Your shirt. It does match my shirt, doesn't cool. it, Jason? How funny that that happened that way. I love that, eh? Yeah. What a coincidence. Hey, so last year uh, we were talking about uh, self-piercing rivets and rivet guns, and uh, we talked about the PR5, and we brought it back this year, but not because of the SPR features that the gun offers, but because of a new feature. When you're working on F-150s, Ford does not allow self-piercing rivets to be installed on the replacement panel like we did this morning. So what they require is either aluminum MIG plug welds, that's one option that they allow, or blind rivets in a lot of cases, but typically SPR guns aren't capable of installing blind rivets. But what ProSpot now has done, they have a new cool tool, cool tool that's available that's an adapter for the PR5 where you can install blind rivets now with it. So you can now repair this F-150 with a PR5 SPR gun uh, and this, uh, this blind rivet adapter. So that's uh, a pretty cool tool. And it is a great saving. So I am loving the fact that this year, if you walk around the, sh uh, the show floor and you start talking to the equipment manufacturers, you're gonna find that they're, fu they're looking for ways to let, let one tool be able to work with you in your shop and you're not having to buy four and five of the same thing and it's just fantastic to see. That's a pretty cool tool and since we're talking about the F-150 box, another cool tool we picked up uh, this week while we're here is this truck bed lift uh, kit here. So what we can do is unbolt our box, unbolt the bed rather than trying to lift it up with a whole bunch of people. We can slide the tool in there, extend the arms, put some clamps on here. These will actually adapt, they will go onto the uh, tailgate as well, however this vehicle does not have that part of the component installed. So we're using some uh, some fasteners here instead. Lift lift the bed off the truck. How many of you have taken three, off. four guys in the shop to take a bed off a truck right now? Wouldn't that be amazing to keep production going? One guy can do it all. Lower Love the it. truck, lower bed back on there. It's a pretty cool tool. That's a very cool tool. It's a very cool tool. I like that one a lot. You know, and since we're kind of uh, back in this area, we're going to use another one of our pro spot props here. But to talk about this MIG buddy. This is a pretty cool tool here as well. So not all. MIG welding, not all MIG welders have a nice little system here like ProSpot has to hang your gun cables on. Usually you got them, you know, laying on the floor, you put them on top of the car, and you drop it here and all of a sudden you got, you know, wire spooling everywhere. You drive over them, you do. They drive yeah. over them. So this cool tool, it's got a magnetic stand, it's got other adapters, you can put it wherever and you can put your MIG gun torch in here to hold it, keep it in, keep it in position where you need it. It's great for schools as well, so if you're working on welding tables, Great thing, we use these for our JLR training at the Tech Center in Appleton. Real cool tool, do what you need to do with your hands. Guns right there, easily accessible. 
pretty yeah. cool tool. It's a very cool tool. I got to get me some of those. Yeah. That's I, going home with me. I got a guy. Turn your back, man, and it's gone. I, so while we're on the topic of welding and kind of let's talk a little bit about welding safety and what's changing. So shop owners, you got out in the, in the shop, you probably got five or six guys working today. One guy's going to go grab the welder. He's going to start working on a car, right? How many of you got welding curtains that partition the working technician from the technician next to him? Protecting the eyesight, doing all the protection, right? We don't have a lot of welding curtains out there, and some of the things that stopped us for a while is light and being able to see, and the same thing that happens when we go up onto the frame racks. Well, Carliner has, and I couldn't get the whole booth brought over here for you, but launching this year at SEMA is what's called the Brilliant Solutions. And what it is is it's LED lighted curtains. So everything from your welding curtains to your aluminum partitions to your safety bays, even down into your bench racks, getting light to the technicians, protecting the technicians, and making it easier to work. Because half the time I know when I've, I've like jammed a thumb or done something wrong is because I was kind of working in the dark underneath it's, the car. That could be a challenge. Yeah, so that one's, that's a very cool tool. Please make your way over to Carliner, take a look at those lighted curtain solutions, and be thinking about how you're protecting the technicians in your shop. Not just the one holding the welder with a welding helmet, but your OSHA compliance means that the technician next to him needs to be protected as well that's not working on that car. Safety is important. Safety, safety, safety. And what do you got here? I got, so last year I rolled out and told you guys about the, the tape thing from you, you, uh, Collision you, Edge. You rolled. I rolled it. I, see what I did there, Jason? That's why I'm the marketer and you're the tech man. Gotcha. Okay. So this year, Tim's up the game a little bit and he's got the tape caddy available to you. We've also got the two inch caddy now. So it's fully magnetic. How many of you shop owners are losing lots of rolls of tape because they're wet, they're on the floor, they're rolled over, and tape's expensive, right? And you seem to be buying a lot of it. Well, the magnetic tape thing can go with you. Now with the caddy, it can stay on my hip, whatever size I want. If I happen to be working on the car and I want to just put it up on the car, looky there, it's magnetic there. It can go anywhere with me. Like we said, we got multiple sizes in it. Fine lines coming out really, really soon. The other thing the tape caddy does for me, I got a place for my razor blade so that I never lose it. How many of these have we dropped in the grates over the years <laughs> that we didn't have to? I've got a, a little Velcro here and a magnet as well. So it's one of the greatest things. I keep it on my hip. But Billy's go see him at the booth, learn more about the tape thing, which this would be just the tape thing. And if you notice how easy it is to roll out and tape all the way down the car if you need to, but you'll never lose another roll of tape. And are those It'll, available in different sizes? Yeah, so the, we got regular quarter, we got uh, two inch, we've got fine line coming. Whatever size of tape you're using, Tim's got a solution for you but I'd make sure I take up a couple of caddies as well. That's a cool tool. Uh, yeah, it's does very it, cool. Does he have anything else cool? He does have another thing else cool. So we also showed you last year some of the estimating tools from Collision Edge. We had the small dent viewer board for taking your photos and documenting your damage to the insurance partners. Because face it, how, much, how many of your estimators are on the phone day after day being asked to retake pictures? Hey, I don't see that dent. Can you take another picture? That doesn't look like a six hour dent. It looks like a two hour dent. Can you take another picture? Well, the Dent Viewer boards did that and did it very well, but we had a lot of requests for bigger truck side panels. How do I show that damage? How do I hold and move it around? And so now the larger Dent Viewer board is available freestanding. It's got the feet on it. You've got the white side for your darks, your darks for your lights. It's magnetic. You'll be able to take all your pictures, show all of your damage, document it completely, send it off and get those estimates paid faster without wasting time running back out to the car two, three times taking new pictures. All of that time that I'm not running around taking pictures, I can be researching OEM repair data and upping my estimates. That's a great, that's a that cool tool. tool. That's a cool tool. What's your next cool tool you got right next to you? I'm on a roll. Yeah, you are, keep All right. at it. So this is the total automotive sanding system from 3M. You've probably seen it a lot advertised around lately. Contaminant control is becoming a big deal in the body shop. We've got to get that under, under control, really. Not just for safety, for what we're breathing in while we're working. We can't sand with just a dust mask anymore. But also speeding up production, keeping the shop clean, not carrying over those body contaminants into the paint department. So the vacuum sanding, total sanding system from 3M is an amazing tool to use. Um, it is now out fully across the United States. You're going to be able to get it anywhere. And out in the parking lot, so if you go out past the Exalta paint booths out there, you'll see the 3M booth. We've got three of them out there. You can come and take a demo, sand some panels, go through the different grits of the abrasives, see it work, see it work for you, and how you might be able to put it in your facility. But start thinking about contamination control in your shop. 
That's a cool tool. Cool tool. Hey, and since we're talking about vacuums, might as well right. Move I know, our right? Next, uh, it's our like next you vacuum, it. Our dust extraction system from ProSpot. Uh, this one's a little bit unique compared to some of the other standing tools that are out there because it does not run on electricity. This is all fully pneumatically operated, so uh, only air. And one thing that's really cool about this tool is how heavy it is. This thing is unbelievably light. Now this one a little bit, might have a little bit of dust in it or something. Ah. But, uh, but the, so they've got one for the steel and they've got one for aluminum. Uh, the difference, the only difference between the two systems is the, uh, the lines on the steel one are not conductive. The ones that on the aluminum system are conductive. So you can actually ground it. So I think we've heard concerns about aluminum dust and the potential for explosivity. They've built that in the system. So as that dust is going through there, it's actually grounded and won't, uh, won't cause any issues with that. Again, also helps that it's you know, fully pneumatic as well. So that's a pretty cool tool. And one extra feature of this one is, you know, it's great you can sand on the, the hood when it's on the car, the deck when it's on the car, but a lot of times we're taking panels off the cars and we got to try to find a place to put them. So this one actually has a stand that you can put down, adjust the light, oh, you can adjust the legs. So you don't have to I got you, I got you. This. <laughs> adjust the legs on it, put your panel on here, use your tool, your cool tool and uh, go on your merry way. Yeah, what I really like about this one is that it is pneumatic only. So for the for the total automotive standards, I need electricity and I'm gonna need air. For that, just being completely pneumatic, it easily moves around the shop. Those containers are about five pounds, a little under that. So anyone can just pick it up and run with it all around the shop. Even I can carry it around. So it is definitely a cool Bring it on the plane, bring it on the plane back home. I could bring it, would that be a carry-on? Can we make a video of me trying to put it in the carry-on? You put your luggage, you take the screws off, put your luggage That inside. would be fantastic, with my own table for eating in the airport. <laughs> So we got uh, two, just two more final tool, cool tools. Um, first, I want to let you know, for those of you that aren't watching Collision Hub, those that aren't watching the Collision Hub Network News Monthly feature, Who's you're missing a lot of great information. Interviews with subject matter extra small around the country, uh, great content. Our iCar360 videos have been featured on Collision Hub, Collision Hub Network News. It's a great show. You go to collisionhub.com, uh, go to the Collision Hub YouTube page, Lots of great content, lots of great information on there. So it's a very valuable resource, a real cool tool cool for, you to, for you to check out. And I've got one more tool for you too, Chuck, if you can switch us over here. So has anybody heard anything about pre-scanning or post-scanning or collision repair diagnostics or post-repair calibration in the last couple days? It's been uh, a pretty hot topic. A little, around, bit. A, little we're, bit. We're a little bit. We're a little into it lately. A little lately. bit into it. So yeah. ICAR has been doing a lot of work around collision repair diagnostics. We've been doing a number of repairability summits, bringing subject matter experts in to talk about technical issues, uh, to talk about uh, how we can go through best practices and repair these vehicles properly, make sure we're identifying diagnostic trouble codes, identifying advanced driver assist systems, and it was just a ton of work. So we hear a lot about pre-scan, post-scan, but one conversation that we're not hearing as much about that we really need to start talking about is, is post-repair calibration. A lot of these systems, your lane departure warning systems, your lane keep assist, your adapter's cruise control, blind spot, cross traffic, on and on and on, they require recalibration under a lot of different conditions. So what ICAR's done is we've spent uh, thousands of hours doing research of OEM procedures to get the information to you more quickly. So rather than spending your valuable time during the damage analysis and estimating process, trying to find out whether or not you have to calibrate these systems, we've done that work for you. So we launched this week, we got about 85 to 90% coverage on the 2016 model years, and by the end of this year, we're gonna have 100% coverage on 2016 model years. So if you go to rts.icar.com, we're linked there from icar.com. If you're an icar gold class facility, if you're an icar platinum individual, if you're a board member, if you're an icar member, a, a committee person, instructor, 110,000 people plus have access to this information today. You'll see we got a little banner up here for our calibration search. On the left-hand side, it says OEM calibration requirements search. So if I log into there, I can pull up a make, model, and year. So we're gonna pull up the uh, F-Series pickup here. And we're gonna select the 2016 F-150. I'm gonna log in uh, using my iCar, my iCar credentials. Everybody write uh, that down. So you can see that this vehicle, now this is not the vehicle that's right in front of you at that time. This is letting you know this vehicle has the following options. Your, your vehicle may or may not have the features, but these are the options that are available on the F-150. So you can see they've got a 360 degree camera. They've got an active park assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, inclusion braking, inclusion warning, lane departure warning, keep assist, rear view, rear cross traffic, park assist. So a ton of advanced 
driver assist systems on this vehicle are available. Eric Mendoza today from Toyota made a great point that I never, that I never really thought about before. The lights on the dash, that's for the customer. That's letting them know, hey, you've got a check engine light, you've got an airbag light, an ABS light, and you need to take your car to, to get serviced. The diagnostic trouble codes, that's for the technician. So the dash lamps, don't, they're not for us, they're for the customer so that when they can identify when they've got an issue with their vehicle. Uh, so you can also see which um, cameras and or sensors are responsible for the operation of that system. So if I look at adaptive cruise control, I see there's a sensor behind the front bumper cover grill area. If I click on that, it's gonna let me know what Ford calls that system. So we're calling it, you know, adaptive cruise control. We're, we're identifying the location of the vehicle and our generic term for it. We're gonna list out what they call it. So Ford calls it their cruise control module. And it's letting you know that if you remove that sensor, it has to be recalibrated. It has to be re-aimed. Um, we're also letting you know if there are other parameters that uh, might require you to take the vehicle for a test drive or so we're also putting notes in there. So you can see this one says, on vehicles equipped with trailer reverse guidance, this procedure also performs the trailer reverse guidance. So we're you know, putting some special notes in there as well. So again, as you're going through the damage analysis process, identifying these adaptive, uh, advanced driver assist systems, identifying the trouble codes that might be associated with them, going through, doing your OEM research, gathering that information, you can better build a repair plan so when the vehicle's ready to go on Friday, it's ready to go on Friday. You're not sending it back to the dealership because you missed something on it. We can calibrate the system. We can know that we're giving our customer a car back that's going to perform properly, going to function the way they design it to. And uh, it's just uh, all around. So that's, you know, it's, it's, it's all about complete safe and quality repairs. A very, very cool tool. So you know, if we can drive home a point to you today, you know, I always tell people about 20 years ago when I started in the business, as a technician, I could have five skills, and those five skills could fix pretty much any car that came in the, in the shop. I could fix a dent, I could pull a frame, I could replace a panel, I could weld, I could paint, I could do everything. Those skills just aren't true anymore these days. We're really working on rolling computers. So even if I remove the sensor or I have frame damage and I'm having to realign the car, there are so many things on there that have to be replaced. When an OEM issues a statement on scanning and recalibration prior to delivering the car to the customer, folks, there's a reason they're doing that. So I got a shop in California, Jason, um, did not do the calibration. Thankfully, they had a rule at their shop that was uh, test drive. It was a lane departure warning system. It was out of calibration, so it was not seeing the proper space. The owner of the shop happened to be the one doing this test drive. He goes to merge to get on the freeway. The lane departure system now believes that he is getting off of the road, and it goes to correct him. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Can you imagine a consumer, the customer had picked up their car, and maybe that had been them at that time? Would they have then panicked and maybe overcorrected? Would they have crossed lanes of traffic? What could have happened? So making sure that you're doing what the OEMs require, that you're using this tool and looking it up, it is one of the most amazing cool tools that you can have. The other most amazing cool tool that you can have is education. So knowing what's changed on today's cars, not assuming that yesterday's technology applies to today's vehicles, staying up to date with your OEM classes, your iCar training, and continuing education for technicians and estimators, that's the best tool you can have. Fantastic. Thanks for coming to SEMA 2016 Appreciate and being your here. Time and effort. Thank you.